Right, hello there. Uh, it's Geek of Shapes here. Um, now, I've not been doing very many reviews on the razors and that, um, but if anyone has actually followed me on LinkedIn or connected to me on LinkedIn, you'll more likely find that you'll see that. I'm still doing lots of posts about the shaving market, but they're much more on the technical side, like uh, share ownerships and things about the ones in the UK. Now, what you might have heard of recently is that Harry's have recently done a deal with Edgewell, the owners of Schick and um, Wilkinson Sword and Bulldog and a lot of other home care brands. And they're going to be bought out for $1.37 billion uh, made up in shares and equity. So um, it's quite an interesting little story. And of course, both of them have come out and said the reason for this big tie up deal is because um, Harry's have been a fresh upstart, gaining lots of market share, and they have a great um, business to consumer model, which um, Wilkinson's and uh, Edgewell and Schick have been struggling to develop. Now, personally, I don't think that's actually the whole story. I think that's more of what's been coming out and being said publicly. Um, for example, I think it's like 375 million, or it was 475 million worth of funding that's gone into Harry so far. Um, and I'm pretty sure anyone can build up quite a lot of brand uh, with spending that sort of capital and that sort of money. So they have gained quite a lot of market share, but from what I understand, they've not been profitable. Uh, this was similar to Dollar Shave Club. They built up a lot of market share. Uh, but they weren't profitable when Unilever bought them out for a billion dollars in 2016. Um, so, but there's more to talk about on Dollar Shave Club and Unilever at a later date. So, why do I think that Harry's has been bought out? Now, I think a lot of it is to do with uh, Edgewell trying to protect their current market share. So... A good analogy would be, um, back from history in the building products, uh, there was a little startup called Screwfix, and uh, they got bought out by a mega amount by Kingfisher Group, who owns um, B&Q. Now, uh, the, the deal that was done was much more than anyone ever expected or anticipated, and it really turned out what it was is B&Q wanted to stop the hurt that was happening from the other company. So it was more of a defensive approach initially, but they have built on it and grown upon it. Um, and the owners who owned uh, Screwfix at the time were put into a non-competition contract and they weren't allowed to sell direct anymore. Although they did start up a company called Silverline and Tool Station, which then got sold out to Travis Perkins. But let's get back to razors, shall we? So, um, I think what's really done it for Harry's is they have got into the bricks and mortar stores. So in America, Canada and that, they've got into the, like, the likes of Target. Um, I'm sure my fellow viewers can tell me many of the others that are out there that they've got into. And in the UK, they have done a tie up deal with a company called Boots, which I think is linked to Walgreens in the USA. So um, I've co commented previously many a times that the subscription direct to market just isn't working in the UK. Um, it more likely works a bit better in America because the market conditions are different, but I still don't believe it's quite as profitable as they've all been saying. So I think this is about um, Edgewell who own lots of blades. I mean, the amount of blades they already own uh, design wise is more than any other manufacturer from what I understand. Um, and therefore, they didn't really need to buy Harry's who have their own manufacturing plant in Germany um, because they bought that for 100 million. And if Edra wanted to do that, they could have done that years ago because FinTechnic had been around for many, many years. Um, but Harry's have been getting quite a premium price on this. They've been getting in the UK £1.75. And Edra do like to sell their blades, their five blades, for around the £2 mark. So they have sort of aligned more within the pricing point because when they were fine technic, um, they were generally more house brand razors and they were much cheaper price point. 
Um, so I think Edrell are um, trying to consolidate their market point, trying to stop someone else from potentially buying um, Harry's. For example, I think Colgate to Palmolive would be a great um, fit for one of these type of razor companies, and they would then be able to get distribution into the large uh, retail outlets like Target, Walgreens, um, Asda, uh, Walmart, and with Colgate, Palmolive already having a lot of other SKUs um, within their product mix, it would be another one and be easy to get into those large retailers where a lot of the profit from all these people are being made. Um, now, of course, the stock market didn't like the news either. They lost about 15% of their share value on the news that they have purchased at Harry's. I think that was also a little bit harsh because um, it might be a rather defensive move, if in my opinion, to purchase them rather than the progressive move that they're talking about. Because for 475 million, I'm sure you could have built your own version, dear Edgewell. Um, but it does stop someone else with very deep pockets a bit like where Unilever bought at Dollar Shave Club it stopped someone of the other big conglomerates maybe Kraft Heinz who tried to take over Unilever yeah so it does stop one of them from coming into the marketplace um, so that's why I think they've done it it's more defensive it consolidates their position it ensures that their market is now still their market. I mean, really, whenever you go into the shops, there's virtually only ever two on there. It's an Edgewell brand or a um, Gillette brand that's on there. And then you might get the odd Bic or something, but they're low down. But the prime ones are nearly always uh, Edgewell, which is either Schick or Bulldog or um, Wilkinson Sword or Gillette. And if there was a third party, because Harry's has been coming in with some nice pointers out, um, that's just taken away from their market. And so they're really consolidating to try and make sure that they don't lose the market share they already have. Um, and so it's going to be interesting. Uh, what will also be interesting is that um, Dollar Shave Club have been developing their own razor system. And so that's owned by Unilever, who already have good distribution networks into the big stores. So who knows, apart from this direct to market, you might find a version. I think they should call it the Hammerhead though, due to its connector, because it looks great. So um, here we go. That's my view. I actually think it wasn't a bad move in a defensive market to ensure that they don't lose their profitability and that. Um, however, time will tell and see how it continues. You may find that um, Edgewell is still relatively small on these big company scales. Might find themselves getting bought out by one of the megas anyway, um, such as, uh, although Kraft Heinz have lost quite a lot of their money recently. Um, and so, but Warren Buffett, clever bloke, who knows where it might go. So that's my view. It's most likely to be very controversial, um, but, Edra, you have more razors and more blades, and although the stock market didn't like it, I still think it's quite a sound uh, company, and I think you have a lot of great products. For example, when you bought out uh, Bulldog, you did extremely well on that one. So, anyway, there we go.